Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're looking at a response that Matt Jackson over at VW Life, check it out below, it's a Volkswagen Gearhead channel. He got this response from Blackmagic Design support back when he upgraded to the studio version of Resolve. Now, he was looking for the hardware acceleration options. You see, you get the ability to use the hardware accelerator inside your graphics card, which exists in a NVIDIA 1060 like he's using, when you upgrade to the studio version. This helps you with performance both in your timeline and in your render. The challenge that he hit was Blackmagic Design support let him know that because he doesn't have 3.5 gigabytes of video RAM, he's not able to use the hardware encoding options. Now he has three gigabytes of video RAM, and I swear I've used this with an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card on a laptop with only two gigabytes of video RAM. So it's surprising to me that he's unable to use this option. But it made me want to dig into the hardware configuration requirements from Blackmagic Design to see exactly what do they recommend. So let's jump at it and see what it looks like. I think it might surprise you. It's a little higher than I thought it might ask for. Let's go look at it. Here we are with the hardware configuration guide I mentioned. You again notice it is for DaVinci Resolve 15. This does not distinguish between studio and free edition, but I can tell you for many of the options, you're gonna want the studio version, especially on a performance basis. When you look at the suggested systems, let's jump at Windows. You'll notice, of course, they recommend some of their core hardware for video capture, playback, etc. But if we get to the core of the system, this would be the CPU and the GPU. They recommend an X-series processor from Intel, which is well over $1,000 for the chip. They recommend 16 to 64 gigabytes, in some cases 128 if you're large texture in Fusion. And in the AMD side, they recommend the 1950X that I have in the Thread Smoker machine. If we look down further, we're looking for pre built dual Xenon, dual Xenon, dual Xenon, uh, 7940X, et cetera, et cetera. So these things, we're talking about extremely expensive hardware, three to $4,000 minimum if you were to build a system around these platforms. There are some laptops recommended, which surprises me, but uh, even they have. You know, starting at a 1060, I think the video RAM on this one is going to be a 1066 gigabyte version. And I say that because, again, Matt had three gigabytes and was told you're not able to use hardware encoding. On the Linux side, it's the same thing, same type of hardware, uh, same class. This could be extremely expensive. Now, let's check out the graphics cards that they recommend as we come down further. Notice they start with the Quadro options, and these have. <laughs> 32 gigabytes of an HBM2 is even faster than the GDDR6 that exists in our modern graphics cards. And at the time that they published this, it was GDDR5. You can see they then go to the Titan graphics cards. These are $2,500 to $3,000 graphics cards. And then below that to our lowly 1080 Ti or 1080. Now, these graphics cards were anywhere from $550, $600 to about $1,000 depending on when you bought it in the market. And if you were to go for an 80 series graphics card today, you're looking around $750 to $1,200 for a 2080 or a 2080 Ti. The interesting thing about this, this is exactly what Blackmagic Design support suggested. They said to Matt, in order for hardware accelerated encoding to be useful, uh, you need three and a half gigabytes of video RAM, and that's why they've never recommended anything less than an 80, XX80, series graphics card. So they're truly saying if you want to run DaVinci Resolve Studio or DaVinci Resolve Free and have it be useful, you need to run an 80 series processor up, which means your graphics card is going to be $750 and your and your CPU is going to be another thousand or so. This is uh, quite heavy. You do notice they recommend an RX 580. These can be easily had on the used market for $150. $130. Uh, the reason they offer this is because they have an external GPU enclosure, which is aging at this point, that they suggest and want to sell. The GPU enclosure is Thunderbolt, and it's intended to accelerate primarily laptops. Um, they have it integrated with MacBooks in most of their ads. Still, I would not, uh, I, I really wouldn't recommend that for DaVinci Resolve at this point. 
I've got some benchmarks on the channel if you want to check them out. There's a link above to see what a 580 does in DaVinci Resolve. In fact, if we check our benchmark results of recent, you can see here uh, with a 1070 and 8 gigabytes of video RAM, note this is under Blackmagic Design's suggested graphics card configuration, we still hold respectable. In fact, it's extremely usable at a 1070, and as a mid-range or value system, I highly recommend the 1070 or a 2070 for editing and work. Um, and the same holds here in B-Raw testing. So I, I don't know that I definitely recommend following the hardware configuration settings to a T. I think the 70 class series of processor is good. It just shocked me to see such high recommendations coming directly from Blackmagic Design. Let me know what you think of these recommendations. Are they right? I mean, should a software vendor only recommend the highest configuration in, as a way to uh, make users buy more hardware and hopefully get better performance out of their system? Or do you think that it's on the software manufacturer to write their software in a way that it could be used across a larger variety of hardware? Let me know what you think below. Let me know what your system is and what benchmark results you get out of it and what you think about this. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. We have uh, frequent benchmarking discussions on the channel and in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day.